Sure looks like a popper morning to me. Good morning everyone, welcome to Measure Up Angling. I'm Joe Nett, solo trip this morning. Uh, yesterday was a very long day. We had a bass tournament out of Hartford, did well, took second place. Um, this morning it's uh, stripers, big stripers on poppers. Water temperatures come up really fast. Guys have started to catch them. So we're out here to do the job, see if we can get them too. Um, my son was supposed to be with me this morning. But like I said, long day yesterday. He didn't get out of bed, so it's a solo trip. And we'll see if uh, we can't pull off a few fish and maybe teach you a couple of tricks. Let's get at it. One of the things I like to do when I'm fishing a popper, make my nice long cast, hit the water, and pop it right after it hits. A lot of times if you land somewhere near a fish, it hits the water and you throw in that pop, you get them to activate that much faster, move in on the bait, show themselves, maybe even just pile drive it, finish it off right away. But I like to give them a good bit of noise so they know it's there right off the bat before it starts working. Try and get that reaction strike quick. It's one thing I saw with all my years of guiding. It's the uh, natural rhythm of a person. It's almost like a heartbeat when they cast a popper and pop, 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 pop. It just, that just doesn't work, especially on pressured fish. A mechanical approach is not going to get you bit. You got to adjust. You want to change it up and think about it all the time. The intensity of the pop. If you're in really fast water, you want to be really pretty strong with your pops straight through. But if you're in this soft water, you can lighten it up a little bit from time to time. But the biggest thing I can say is don't be rhythmic. Don't be mechanical. Fish that are pressured and see poppers all the time, they'll notice that. They may come up and take a look, bump it, and then they walk away. It's the same thing with any crankbaits, glide baits, any of it. Don't be rhythmic. I mean, sure, you know what? A walking bait, like a pencil popper, you have to really keep that moving and that change in direction is what really fires the fish. But most poppers, you just want to make sure that you're not rhythmic. Have longer pauses, shorter pauses, two pops, three pops, one pop, a strong pop, a couple of lighter pops. Just don't don't be rhythmic in your in your presentation. And sure, you know, days when it's hot, in other words, when the bite is hot, it, it isn't gonna matter. They're gonna hit it anyway. But it's the times when those fish are pressured and they've seen a lot of poppers, that's when you really have to be careful about your presentation. You really have to be thoughtful of it. And uh, we're just coming off the first really strong weekend. We had four straight days in the 80s, water temperature skyrocketed, the fish went from subsurface to coming up on top. And there have been a lot of guys out. Yesterday when we were in the, in the bass tournament, there was at least a dozen guys up here, so a dozen boats anyway. Um, so I know they've been pressured. I'm gonna be as thoughtful as I can be about this presentation. See if we can't get hooked up. Oh, 
There we go. Come on. He's looking. Oh, there he is. Oh, that was a decent sized fish. That was a decent sized fish. Let's see if we can get him again. Oh, somebody's there. Come on. Sometimes those subtle little pops, depending on their mood. That hit, there was probably more than one fish there. That was probably still schoolies. If it was a big fish, I think he would have gotten a hold of it. But, that uh, brightens the prospects. Obviously, got to talk him into it this morning. Finicky, finicky fish. But like I said, they've been pressured for three days now. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday were all warm and nice. I mean, south breeze, which really makes it rough to popper fish, but uh, there was a lot of guys out here. So these fish are pressured. It's not a hell of a lot of fish. So start getting educated. And they get a little finicky. Presentation's got to be right on. Oh, here we go. Come on. Come on. He came up quick. Oh, yeah. Big boil behind the bait. Come on. There he is. Fish on. Just a schoolie. See, you know what? See, he didn't even, he didn't even get it where he's supposed to get it. He whacked it with his body because he's trying to stun the bait. If you notice, he's hooked, he's hooked under. I don't want to hurt your gill there, dude, but I also don't want you hurting me. Uh, yeah, when you're dealing with these treble hooks, be careful. Don't let them stick you. All right, first one of the morning. Not what we're here for, but it's a fish. Not the big one we want, but it's a start. Well, like I said, you noticed he, he got it hooked under the mouth he was actually whacking at that bait to try to stun it he wasn't really grabbing it with his mouth a lot of times you see that with the schoolies because they know they can't really handle it very well trying to eat it so beat it up first and that's a little easier to eat we find when we're throwing oh here we go come on another schoolie you get it? Yeah, you got it. You got it. Boy, there's a load of fish over here, huh? But all little ones. Where's Mr. Big? Yeah, see, he's he's gaff too. He's he's hooked. He is not, I don't think he's hooked in the mouth. He's, he's got fish with him. I can see the motion around him. He's got fish with him trying to get that lure out of his mouth. Yeah, he's got it in the mouth. This guy does. Oh boy. You know, when this water temp rises, even these small fish become fun because they, they fight. They fight hard. Yeah, he got it all. He grabbed it. He grabbed that mouth a bit. I have to get the pliers out. These guys are gonna mess me up.
there we go. Yeah, finicky though. There's another one. Two and two casts, gotta love that, huh? Still not the fish we're looking for. All right. Well, we located some fish, but they're not the big ones that we're after. Still, they're fun. That last one was on that bait the minute it hit the water. In the soft water, you can look for the motion behind the bait. They'll roll up behind it, start to size it up, figure if they can eat it. The small ones, that is. The big ones, they usually just come up and eat it. Sometimes they'll eyeball, but uh, most of the time they just come up and, and slam that bait. They don't have to size it up. It's gonna fit in their mouth. Oh, oh, that's a big fish. Come on, come on. That was a big, big boil behind the bait. Dropped right off, wow. That was a big boil, big fish, no doubt. That was no schoolie. Try and get out in front of them, see if I can't get them to come up again. Boy, they are touchy this morning. Now, we got action over here. See if I can reach that. Yep, got a bass busting a herring. See if I can get in front of them. Oh, look at that, an eagle's coming down trying to eat the herring too. That is, I've only seen that a couple of times. Don't eat my bait. Buddy, don't eat my bait. Get out of there. Now I got an eagle trying to eat my popper. Dude, you're, you're a little crazy. There we go. There he is, little guy. Holy crap. If the bigger one just tried to get it out of his mouth or what? Come here, buddy. Yeah, not the guy we're looking for, but yeah, he had a bigger one with him. Just took off. Let's see if I can get him close and get a better look. That was a bigger one with him. Come here, buddy. Come here, buddy. He's ready to go again. Come on. You really want to be careful with these things. They will mess you up with those treble hooks. And you know what? You can net them if you want, but I find them a lot easier to deal with if you don't net them. Because if you net them, then he's gonna get messed up in the net. He's gonna put those treble hooks into your net and cost you time. But just be very careful hand landing these things with those treble hooks. There you go, buddy. Off you go. All right, let's find Mr. Big now. Another piece of advice with a popper, never drag the bait. Let me get this in a little closer and I'll show you what I mean. It's always got, your forward motion's always gotta be in pops. Don't ever let it wake like that. That does not look like what they're looking for. 
anything that puts them off. Again, like I said, when the bite is really hot, a lot of things don't matter. When they're on the feed, they're going to hit anyway, as long as it looks like they're prey. But when they're pressured, little things set them off and keep them from biting. So just be mindful. Makes a big difference. Yep, I fouled it. I got too aggressive. Do something like that and the hook catches the line. Make sure you run your fingers up the line. Make sure there's no nicks. A nick in the line can mean a broken off fish, lost plug. Just an overall bad situation. There's something cruising through the sand over there. That's a big fish, but it's probably a carp. If he comes close enough, we'll give him a test cast and see. You never know when it's that monster striper just cruising his way up. Now if you can see that ripple. It's coming closer. Put a bait in front of his face and see if we can get him to activate. Yeah. Ha, it is a striper. It's a striper, come on. He got it, come on. Wow, that was cool. That was wicked cool to see him coming up through the sand and hook him up. That was cool. That was awesome. That was awesome. Oh, there's another one over there too. That was cool. That was cool. Yeah. That was cool. All right. That's a big fish. You need to keep your eyes open and you don't just discard the idea of a of a fish cruising up in shallow water over sand to be a carp. You give them that opportunity. And sometimes it can make your morning. He's not as big as I thought he was. I thought he was giant, but he's a good one. That was cool. That was cool. All right. Come on, baby. I guess I should probably break out the net for this guy. There he is. Whew. Okay. Here we 
go. <sighs> All right. First one of the morning. That was cool. All right. First fish of the morning. Gotta love that. It's a beautiful fish. Ah. 32 incher. Just as the sun's coming up. It's gotta love it. You know what? I think we're gonna let this one go. There we go, you got good color. One of the things, this is end of the season. It's actually Memorial Day. This water temp is really warm. And uh, the bigger the fish, the tougher he is to uh, turn around to revive. The faster you get him in, the better. But he's got good color. He hasn't paled. He seems to be a little tired, of course. But I think he'll go okay. Come on, buddy. Come on. Yeah, see, his color is very good. He's dark still. But tired him out. So we'll just give him a minute. If you don't take the time to put these fish in the water and give them a chance to come back, see, he's ready. Give them a chance to come back. They, they'll just sink to the bottom, and that'll be the end of them. See how he's actually trying to pull away from me now? There he goes. That's a sweet release. All right. That was cool. Let's go get another one. Oh, I just made the run upriver. Another piece of advice. Never run over the fish. You will split them up. Stripers are, are motor shy. If it's safe, run the other side of the river and come back around and do your drift where you're catching your fish. If it isn't safe, don't do that. But if it's safe, stay away from the fish and run the opposite side of the river. Ooh, here we go. Come on. There he is. Am I on? Yeah, I'm on. Jeez, he's chasing after. Wow, that's a good one, too. Wow, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Boy, he didn't. He didn't hesitate, did he? No, let him track. It's just pulsing. Maybe this will be a little bit bigger fish. I like the way he's tracking. Boy, you know, I, I hooked him up and I wasn't even sure if I still had him because he came darting right at me. One thing that's really rough on these bigger fish is this warm water. They give you a good hard burst and a good hard fight, and then they just they just quiet right down because it's kind of like running in the heat. You, know, you can only do just so much before you get extra tired. This one's a little better. Staying down. Working hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stay tight on them. Wow. All right. Yeah, this one's a better fish. Don't want him to get under the boat. Actually, 
actually might be right around the same size. Boy, he got all of that too. Now, if it wasn't for the treble hooks, I'd probably try to hand land these guys, but been stuck too many times, don't really want to do that. There you go. There you go, fish. Well, thank you for that exciting moment. I'm going to get my rod straightened out here. Come on, buddy. Yeah. There we go. There we go. All right, it's been a good morning so far. This is number two. Another decent fish. I'm not gonna bother getting a measure on them. Just gonna get them back. Like I said, this water temperature is really warm. And if you're gonna save them, you gotta get them back into the water pretty quick. Get another one, right? Let's get another one. Huh. There he is. Oh, it's a small mouth. Are you kidding me? That's an aggressive fish. That is an aggressive fish. Poor thing. He definitely took on more than he could chew. Look at this. Oh my goodness. Dude, you're just a mess. Holy cow, luckily you didn't get you in the eye. Got you on the side though. Is that an aggressive fish? To eat that? That's crazy, huh? Give them an A for effort. Okay, let's look at some of the uh, poppers I like to use when I'm striper fishing here on the river. You know, if you notice, I've got the skitter pop tied on. Uh, it looks very much like a bait fish, but actually, every one of these baits has the shine and the uh, the appeal of a bait fish. If you saw the video on, on uh, soft plastic fishing for um, school stripers, we, we changed color a lot. In other words, water's murky, water's dirty, water's clear, different colored, different colored baits. When it comes to popper fishing, you want fairly clear water. I mean, if it's, if it's got less than, say, three feet of visibility, don't fish a popper, go, go to the soft plastic. But when you've got really clear water, a popper, a surface lure will work fantastic, but you do want to stay natural. If you look at these baits, they all have a shine. They all look like bait fish. They all have, uh, some of them have actual bait fish patterns and scales and fins and eyes. You, you want them to look like, look like a bait fish. You really want that um, natural look. These natural colors give you the best shot. If you, you have something that's, that's very bright in color or unnatural they may back away a lot faster I mean we had a few fish back off very quickly this morning but they may be pressured fish as well so you know a natural presentation is definitely what you need uh, one thing if you notice all, all my poppers here have a tail uh, they don't have to I personally like a tail on my popping baits but the walking baits do not have a tail, and there's a reason for that. If you put a tail on and, and create a drag at the back of the bait, you won't get the walking action that, that you need. It, it just pulls the bait back, and it won't allow that head to kick side to side. 
So not a good idea to put a, a tail on the back of a walking bait, but poppers, that's a different story. I do like a tail on my poppers. Well, that's the amazing thing, Dust. You got a pot of herring, not that big. You got him? got him? Yeah, that's a good one. Nice job. Nice job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you guys need the net for that guy. Nice job. You know, you're just complaining about only catching one. Now you got a good one. Wow, yeah, take drag, baby. Let's keep her. Yeah, that's a nice fish. Maybe not. Take take your time. Take your time. Wear him down. Only got one hook. I don't know, Dust. He's like right there size wise. Yeah, I think, yeah. think he'll do it. Oh. There you go. I'll tell you what. Yeah, he yeah. gave you gave you a good fight. That yeah, felt good. 29 and a half, almost 30. Awesome. That's a keeper. Alright, wait a minute. <laughs> yep. Hold on. Yeah, that's a nice fish. All right. Got us got us one. Beauty. That's what we came out here for, guys. Yep. Here. All right, one in the box. Got to love it. Okay, I'm back to the ramp calling it a day. Got two nice ones today. I'm sure you noticed this isn't a one-shot deal. I uh, put this together with probably three different trips so I hope you enjoy it I hope you like what you see and if you do please subscribe thumbs up ha ha it is a striper it's a striper come on he got it come on wow that was cool that was wicked cool to see him coming up through the sand and hook him up that was cool That was awesome. That was awesome.